everyone. My name is Taryn and welcome back to my channel, Nicole Flower House. My channel is all about my cut flower garden or maybe it's a little bit of a micro flower farm at this point. I grow cut flowers in zone 7B on one acre of land. Today I'm going to walk you through the garden and I really want to focus on what is starting to bloom and the changes that are happening throughout the space. First up, I want to show you the dahlias. They are getting big and I'm so happy about this. Now something, ooh, there's a dragonfly on this one. Do you see him? Let's see. That is so awesome. Dragonflies are wonderful to have in your garden. They are an amazing predator of pests, bugs, and they are just so gorgeous and lovely. Okay, but back to the dahlias. They're getting really big and I think this year I want to try not pinching these. I don't know if you remember from last year, but I had a fungal disease going on in my dahlias. With a lot of pruning and upkeep, I was able to get that mostly taken care of, but I'm wondering if cutting these hollow stems down allowed some water to get down into the tubers and might have contributed to that. And these actually look really bushy and they already have multiple stems. So the point of pinching your dahlias is so you can get thinner stems and longer stems. But a lot of these are already branching nicely with a lot of stems and I don't see really big central thick stalk in the middle of these. So I think I'm just going to let these plants carry on as they are without pinching. I know Laura from Garden Answer mentioned that she did not pinch her dahlias last year, so I just want to give that a try. Everybody's climate and growing conditions are different, so something that I have to deal with a lot here in North Carolina is humidity. We have a lot more fungal disease than other places just because we are a high heat, high humidity location. So I'm going to try not pinching dahlias this year and see how it goes. My snapdragons are getting nice and tall, but I don't think I will have blooms in time for Mother's Day, which is kind of a bummer. I had blooms for Mother's Day last year, but I had the time to plant a fall planting of snapdragons that overwintered. And this year I missed the boat on that. So. These are going to be delayed compared to last year because I didn't get them in until the spring. It looks like my stock is going to bloom soon and some of them are already blooming, so that is fun. Here are a few more in different colors. I've never really had much luck with stock being nice and tall, but these look pretty good. This is a decent stem length. It doesn't look as good as like the seed packet and the pictures online, but it's better than I had last year. I am getting more and more of these yellow poppy flowers starting to bloom. I do remember that from last year that these yellow ones were the first variety to bloom. And my bachelor's buttons that are tucked in here still look nice. But again, last year I had a fall planting of bachelor's buttons that I did not do this time and I am really regretting that. But hopefully this fall I can be more on top of things and get more cool flowers planted that will overwinter. So the bachelor buttons look good, but I still won't have those in time for Mother's Day. I think I can start using these kales pretty much at any time. They have a nice stem length on them and that would make a fun focal point for a bouquet. This is the first year I've grown these and I tend to not use things that I've never grown before. I kind of have to force myself to experiment with them and give them a try. 
I don't know why, I just let them sit in the garden. So I think I should pull a few of these soon and just start to work with them and learn how they are. I just planted out the second half of the seedling bed yesterday. These guys are going through a little bit of transplant shock. I always have the hardest time getting the seedlings gently out of the seed trays. I'm going to try some of the new seed trays where the plants are air pruned and they're a lot easier to get out for next season. You can just tell the height difference between these ones in the back from this point further back have been out into the garden for several weeks now. And these are just in there their first day. So we'll give them some time to recover. And I do have them covered up with shade cloth so they're not getting as intense of sunlight. Now last week I was worried that I had killed my yarrow and I had a wonderful viewer tell me how sturdy yarrow was. And look, it's coming back and it even has buds on it. I can't believe that. These look awful, but they have bounced back. Here is the new baby little seedling. It still looks good. This one was a lot worse off than the other ones, so I have pruned back all the stuff that died on it, as much of it as I could, and it is also rebounding. I'm so impressed. This Orlea is putting off lots of flowers. I'm really excited to have this for Mother's Day as well. I've been experimenting with cutting these and keeping them in the cooler, and they've been doing well in that situation. Just trying to learn the whole cooler thing. If you have tips about coolers, go ahead and leave those in the comments for everybody below so we can all learn. I experimented with putting some of these chives blooms into my bouquets. And the first day I cut them, they actually didn't smell hardly at all. But the second and third days, they were getting pretty garlicky smelling. So I probably won't use these again, but I just couldn't help myself with such a pretty burst of color in the bouquets. This chamomile is going to bloom any day now. And I'm loving this foliage. So I kind of want to try to put this in some things and do a vase test. Still haven't gotten around to that. And there are lots of ladybugs on here. Hiding among all these weeds are my marigolds that I planted out not too long ago. They are starting to bloom. And there's one on the other side here. There she is that nice bright yellow. So that is fun. Some of the first blooms. These sunflowers have put on quite a bit of height since the last time you've seen them. And I've successfully protected them from predators to this point. So hopefully I can continue to keep these protected. And I've been meaning to get out here and do the next succession of seed sowing, and I haven't done that, but I need to get out here and sow more sunflower seeds so I can keep them coming. I am officially out of space in my garden beds for seedlings, so this weekend I'm hoping to get a bunch planted out into the garden mats. This is a new peony to the garden. I'm so excited. This was my grandmother's and it got passed down to me. So it was transplanted from her home to mine. And it is looking so good. I'm glad that the transplant seemed to go okay. And this is a huge plant. So next year, if it puts on blooms, I'm hoping I can get some peonies to cut on. I know my roses are going to be behind this year because of all the transplanting, but we do have buds on some of the 
transplants, not the new bare roots that I planted, but some of the transplants. Even Miss Strawberry Hill has sprays of buds. I'm so excited about this. She even has some that are colored up and going to bloom soon. This rose right here is called the Lark Ascending and this is the one that I was really worried didn't make the transplant, that it had the most damage and it has really bounced back. Look at this new growth and everything. So. I need to get this one cleaned up, but it looks like I did not kill any of my David Austin roses that I moved, and I'm so thankful for that. And I think I lied to you. I said that none of my new bare roots had buds on them, but that is not true. So I need to look closer at some of these. Here's another one. So that is really exciting. Okay, now I want to take you to the front yard to show you something really fun and that I was not expecting to see at all. Okay, before I get to the fun surprise, I got distracted by all these beautiful peony buds. I planted these last fall. They did not shoot up any growth, so I thought they were goners. But here they are. I know you're not supposed to cut these this early into their life, but it is really tempting me. I really want to cut these peonies. These aren't ready for cutting yet. They're still a little hard. When they are soft and squishy is when you want to cut these. And the ants just like the sap that they produce. It doesn't harm the plant at all. So. If you're cutting them for cut flowers, you cut them in the bud stage and you can just rinse those ants off. My lavender is also starting to put on flowers. These are the ones that I grew from seed. I'm not sure if I recommend that or not. You have to be extremely patient. But now that they're at this point and they're flowering, it's really satisfying. But it's been, I think, three years since I started these, so. I've gotten a few questions about my daffodils. They did not do much this year and I've been doing some research and I think what happened was we got a really cold night around 27 or 26 degrees right at a crucial time when they were putting on buds and flowering. I did not know that you had to protect daffodils from cold once they were flowering, um, especially doubles, which is what I have. So next year, if that happens again, I will for sure cover them up with frost cloth, but the, the freeze killed all the buds on them and then they didn't flower again. So that was a loss this year for me, no daffodils, but next year, hopefully I will do better. And behind all these daffodils, I have gladiolas coming up. I don't have much experience with those, but I thought I'd give them a try. Okay, here's what I've been dying to show you guys. Look at these foxglove. These are almost as tall as me. They're beautiful. I don't plan on cutting these at all. I'm just gonna let the pollinators have them. But I need to stake them up but I just had no idea that this is what they were going to look like this year. I planted itty bitty little plants last year and they've just become well established and are giving these huge, beautiful spikes of flowers. These ones don't have blooms yet. Well, they have buds but the plants are just absolutely huge and look amazing. Here's a few more. They're a little bit smaller. 
I have peonies mixed in here and eucalyptus. This is just a giant mulch bed in our front yard. And here are more of these giant foxglove. This eucalyptus didn't make it, but I like this color. It's kind of like a coppery color, so I still will use this on a dried wreath arrangement. I'm wondering if I need to stake these up in any way. But this eucalyptus looks really nice. Look how pretty this foxglove is. Gorgeous. I just can't believe this. I, I am interested in using foxglove in my arrangement. I'm just a little nervous because of how toxic they are to both animals and people if they were to be eaten. But they're absolutely gorgeous. So maybe in the right setting, they would be okay to use. And then I have some flowering cherry trees in this mulch bed as well. And eventually someday, I want to have this whole yard full of perennials and zero escaped instead of lawn. I do want to update you on the pollinator garden. Sadly, it has been completely overrun with weeds again. So I basically need to start that over but it is time to get seeds into this area. So hopefully I will be successful with that endeavor and I'll get it all decorated and nice. But I also wanted to show you this amazing eucalyptus. I mentioned in the last video that I had some eucalyptus that looked really good in the front and this is it. There's more over here. So I've had success with overwintering most of my eucalyptus plants. Some of them don't make it, but I think these larger ones are going to remain well established and survive our winters just fine. And I'm saving all this eucalyptus for my bride for her wedding in July. And I can't wait. There's so much. And the color and tone on this is just beautiful. This is Silver Drop Eucalyptus. And this bigger one is Silver Dollar. I don't know if you can pick out the lavender from all these weeds, but there's also a pretty well-established lavender plant right here. And this is just crazy weeds. I don't know what this is, but it is like taking over everything. So that needs cleaned up. There are some hydrangeas back in here. I wasn't sure if they would survive after they got moved around a lot because of the construction on our house, but they look good. And the foxtail grass is coming up nicely, except I did not have a chance to cut this back. So I think I'm going to leave it be for this season and then next season I'm going to prune it back really hard, probably all the way to the ground. I also have a stash of things in my cooler for Mother's Day. Lots of ranunculus. A few tulips left. And some orlea. The chives, like I mentioned earlier, not going to use those. Too stinky. Here's the ranunculus that I'm trying to pre-sprout. I don't see any growth on these quite yet. Yeah, nothing happening here. It's 
still nice and plump, but no growth. Okay, that is all for today's garden update. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. And the best way you can support me and my channel is to subscribe and share with your flower-loving friends. I'll see you next time. Bye.